Welcome to another podcast. Thanks for joining us. If you're traveling to work or just need some company with whatever you're doing, thanks for joining us and let us begin. The Frog, you're back. I invited you over to watch the movie Cliffhanger. What did you think? Yeah, absolutely awesome. Blew me away. I think what we might start doing when we watch a movie, we might start posting it and giving people notice of what's coming up. So if they want to watch it, they can then relate to it and get our thoughts on it as well. Exactly. So it's a 90s action film. They're going to do a number two. And I thought, let's revisit it. Yeah. And I had an absolute blast with this film. And it still holds up really well. Brilliantly. And that was the fourth time that I had watched it. Maybe probably the fifth or sixth, actually. I've lost count. Did you want to give an explanation as to why Sylvester Stallone went for Cliffhanger? Oh, yes. Thank you. Because there's a story behind this. Yes, there is. So he had done the movie Oscar. Yep. Which I actually enjoyed. You enjoyed, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I I can't judge it because I haven't seen it. And it didn't do that well. No, it didn't. Financially, it didn't do that well. However, some people say it is actually quite amusing. It's actually not too bad at all. Yeah. He then followed it up, and the rumour, and I'm pretty sure the rumour's right, happy to be wrong, Arnold passed on it, and Sylvester took it. And that is a movie called Stop or My Mum Will Shoot. Yeah. Which absolutely flopped. Yeah. Didn't do well, and apparently the movie's not that great. It put in doubt his career, you know, is he a bankable star? You know, will people go see his movies? This movie, Cliffhanger, put him back on the map as that action kind of hero. I remember seeing it when I was in high school. I think I was 14. And I loved it. I remember watching it just going, wow, that was really cool. I was 26 when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was at the peak of my powers. And I loved it as well. <laughs> Okay, so I'll give you a really, really quick overview, not a a long one at all. So basically, there's a botched mid-air heist, which results in suitcases full of cash being searched for by various groups throughout the Rocky Mountains. Underneath that, there's another storyline of a man, and the man is Sylvester Stallone, who's fighting against his own doubts and insecurities after a life-changing accident that he shoulders the blame for. So there's two intertwining stories there Mm. yes and and what a cast I know the cast is absolutely brilliant so as we've already mentioned Sylvester Stallone Mm -hmm. plays Gabe Walker we don't need to say anything else about Sylvester everyone knows him John Lithgow who Ah. in my opinion stole the movie even though it's Sylvester's movie John Lithgow I cannot imagine anyone else and we'll get to other people who were mentioned Mm -hmm. but John Lithgow as Eric Quaylen was just incredible. He was. He was a total psycho. He's one of those actors, you know, I saw him in recently in Daddy's Home 2. <laughs> you look at him in that, and then you look at him in this, and I saw him in also The Crown, Netflix's The Crown, and he plays Winston Churchill. I thought his performance in The Crown was Wow, that's really good acting. Yeah, so people who don't know John Lithgow, even beyond what you've just said, Concord, played Dick Solomon in the TV show Third Rock from the Sun. Oh, yes, of He was course, the father. Yeah. Lord Farquaad in Shrek, <laughs> yes, where yeah, he was yeah. hilarious. So he's showing his versatility with mm-hmm. these. Earl Talbot Blake in a movie called Ricochet with Denzel Washington, which I love as well. I don't think I've seen it. And that. he's just completely psychotic in that right. as well. And finally, he plays a role of Burke in a Brian De Palma film, Blowout, which stars John Travolta. Complete psycho again. That's his go-to. I love him when he's a villain. Yeah. But he is versatile. He can he's be very funny. Good. He can be dramatic. But when he's bad... Yeah. He's awesome. He is. He, he, can, he can switch it on. I remember him from that 80s family flick, Harry and the Hendersons, yeah. where they run over Bigfoot yeah. and take Bigfoot home yeah. with them. <laughs> so he can be a family man as well. So we've got John Lithgow. So we've also got Michael Rooker, 
who plays the part of Hal Tucker. Now, the listeners will know Michael Rooker probably as Yondu. From Guardians of the Galaxy. Precisely. And if anyone's not aware of that, which everyone's sure, he's also in movies such as The Sixth Day, Bone Collector, Replacement Killers, Tombstone, JFK, Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. And and probably dozens and dozens of other movies. Yep. We've also got, for people of my generation, Ralph Waite, who plays Frank. Now, Ralph Waite was John Walton, Papa Walton from the Waltons TV show, oh, 1972 yeah. to 1981. So oldies like me will know him from that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know him. We've got Janine Turner, who plays the role of Jesse Dean. Oh, from Northern Exposure. Exactly. I remember that TV show, yeah. We've got Rex Lynn, who we'll talk about a lot more later on, plays Richard Travers. And he is fantastic in this movie as well. I thought he was great in this movie. Now, the listeners may know Rex Lynn from CSI Miami, where he plays Frank Tripp. He's also in Drop Zone, Clear and Present Danger, Wyatt Earp, and again, dozens and dozens of other films. We've also got Leon, who plays the role of Kinnett, Now, people might know Leon from Cool Runnings as one of the bobsled team and also from the film Above the Rim. Yes. Which sounds like the kind of thing that you would like, Concord. Yes, I have seen that movie. He was great in this movie. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. He he was really good. His character had a no-nonsense. Oh, yeah. And he he did an awesome job. He did. So the last one I'll mention, there's a lot of characters in this movie, but the Mm. last one I'll mention is Michelle Joyner unfortunately played the role of Sarah. So Sarah was only in it for five minutes. Ah, yes. Yes. So they're the characters. We've got an overview. Let's go. The movie starts off where Hal injures his knee. You don't see him being injured. No. But they need to do a rescue. And they're on this mountain peak. And Jesse who's the helicopter pilot and love interest with Sylvester Stallone, Gabe. And over the radio, they actually say, we advise against a winch rescue. Yeah. So, you know, they drop off the winch and, you know, they pull it quite taut so they can, you know, have a harness and, you know, go across. This first scene, I think this first scene sets up the movie so well and is so good because it's dramatic there's lots of tension it's well written in in such a short time so much has happened Hal has hurt his knee he goes across you know uh, kind of abseils across whatever they call it yeah. Know, yeah across to the helicopter his girlfriend doesn't have much climbing experience at all probably shouldn't have be, even been there if you're, you know, first-time climber, inexperienced, her gear malfunctions, she starts to slip. It's a 3,000-plus metre drop. Yeah. Can you keep the line steady? That clue's not going to hold! I can't help! I can't help it, please! Gabe, you have to go after her. No! Gabe, uh, Sylvester Stallone's character, just quickly thinks on his... Feet like we're good. I've got to go out and get her. Yeah, the, the buckle's not going to hold, it's it's failing, it's not going to hold. And when I was sitting at the cinema seeing this, I was like, shit. But you know what? And this is what I really liked at the time. I wasn't expecting, I was like, it's the Sylvester Stallone movie, he's gonna save her, it's gonna yeah. be okay. Yeah, I'm gonna mention in this, this is a movie that came out in 1993. So there's going to be major spoilers. <laughs> I should have mentioned that at the start. He goes out to save her. And I thought, as I said, I thought, everything's going to be okay. Sylvester Stallone movie. He's going to save the day. Yeah. It's not right for two people. Just keep it from swinging. I'm going to sit on my heart. Oh, forget the heart. There's no time I'm going for. Keep shit. No. But that doesn't happen. It does doesn't it, Concord? No, it doesn't. So just to really quickly create another picture for the listeners... These opening scenes of the movie feature spectacular wide sweeping aerial shots mm. of the Cortina d'Ampezzo and Dolomites Mountains in Italy. Italy. Yes. And it is just spectacular. Yeah, it's As awesome. you said, Concord, the opening of the movie 
just sets up everything. Yeah, it, it does. is brilliant. It it's really breathtaking. Because these days, to save money, they don't do a lot of on. You know, I mean, The Last of Us TV series, they did scout a lot of places, and you can tell they're outdoorsy. But you know, movies back then they didn't have a lot of green screen. You didn't. You had to go to the place. Mm. And that first scene, Sylvester Stallone's trying to save her. He's doing everything, you know, and he's he, he just grabs her in time, but she's slipping. Yeah. And he actually says, just reach up. If yeah. you reach up and get a hold of me, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Reach Come up! Come on, honey! Use your other hand! Reach up! Yeah. Reach up! She, she's freaking out, understandably. She falls to her death. I was not expecting that when I first saw it. And before she falls, the director, Rennie Harlan, created another image for the viewers. Just before she falls... Yes. A uh, small dog, which is in the backpack, falls out, and you can see it falling to the ground. Yes, like that, so that, that you get, teddy bear type of dog. Exactly. Yeah, falls out, the soft toy foot, and you just see it fall and fall, just to get that kind of weight and gauge just how high up they are exactly and that was the prelude to the real thing it it was and that whole scene why it's also so tense how michael rooker's character yeah yeah. he's saying no don't go out and get her don't go i'm gonna um this is what i'm gonna do it's not right for two people just keep it from swinging i'm gonna sit on my heart forget the heart there's no time i'm going for gabe shit no sylvester stallone's character gabe uh he's girlfriend jesse saying no you got to go out and get a gabe you yeah. don't have enough just go get her go get her Where's gabe? you have to go after her so there was conflicting you know how how we should do this and it sets up the movie you have gabe that after the funeral you don't see the funeral but no. it's it's been told and he comes back for jesse who's <laughs> i have to say pretty patient she's gone what it's 12 months wasn't yeah. it yeah. Away from being away from each other, he comes back for her. Hal and Gabe's friendship is non-existent. It's done. It's done. Yeah. He thinks he's to blame. Letting go. Sylvester Stallone still the image of seeing her fall, like it's all his fault, and he just can't cope. Now, while that's going on, we have Travis. He did this part, and you could tell it by the end of the movie. He's getting frustrated because nothing's going to plan. However. I got the impression that this is all Travis's doing. It's his plan. Yeah. Because he works for the Bureau. He does these trips in the plane. I'm carrying this amount of money. These bills aren't even in circulation. $1,000 bills we're transporting are only used for international banking exchange. You always transport through the air? Mostly. Armored cars can be hijacked, trains derailed, but nobody can touch us in flight. There's a loophole. We can steal the money mid-air and... He coincides with John Lithgow's character, who's, I got the impression that John Lithgow's team were kind of all ex-military, or and they've crossed over to that organised crime. Yeah, exactly. And I also got the, imp- <laughs> the impression, if things start to go south or go crappy, all the team could easily cross on each other or, you know backstab each other <laughs> you know like there's there's a bit of loyalty there but at the same time we're in it for ourselves as well there's loyalty and there's a lot of tension yes yes and one of the most amazing stunts to this day i think it's the in the guinness book of records do you have that on you as a bit of trivia the film was in the guinness book of world records for the costliest aerial stunt ever performed Stuntman Simon Crane was paid $1 million That's right. to cross between two planes at 15,000 feet yeah. without the aid of any safety devices or trick photography. That's right. It's nuts. Zip lining between two planes. Yeah. I remember seeing that and why my 14-year-old little teenage little mind couldn't, you know, <laughs> I also thought, that... That actually looks for real. You know, you could tell there was no doll or mannequin or yeah. any kind of trickery. It was like, wow, is that... Did a double take. It was like, I think that's for real. What a stunt. 
He does the zipline stunt, Travis's character, but the stunt itself is amazing. Yeah. And I like this little bit of, a uh, little bit of detail. So Travis, who works for the Bureau, and John Litho's character said, why didn't you send the cases? And he goes, for some reason, I didn't, didn't think you'd wait for me. Yeah, exactly. So there's this kind of, you know, I don't trust you, this yeah. is my plan, but I don't trust you fully. Roger, why didn't you send the money first? Somehow I didn't think you'd wait for me if I sent it first. And that's where things start to fall apart because right. the pilot's supposed to send over the, the cases. They didn't take out everyone on board. No. One of the other agents wakes up and sends the whole thing south. Yeah. And the cases fall over the Rocky Mountains. The plane goes down. It crashed. And you noticed something about the plane crash, which a number of other people have noticed as well. Yes. When it first crashes... Well, it hangs over the cliff. Precisely. And, and the I said very that next scene, what do you see? It's in the in the bushes kind of thing. It's in it's on, it's the on flat the flat ground. It's on a flat ground. And yep. I said that when we were watching it, I went, yeah. Hey <laughs> Hold on <laughs> I actually picked it up then and went So that was very well spotted. <laughs> <laughs> now why this is going on, this is the day that Gabe has returned for Jesse. I came back for you, you know, I cannot he's basically can't get back to his life. Very patient woman. <laughs> he walks out for a year comes back and she wants him to stay he's not interested but anyway yes the plane goes down and Jesse comes back tells Gabe you know this is what's going on this is where Sylvester Stallone's character is going to start building taking that first step to getting back on the horse yeah and he meets Hal up on the mountain. That's right. And when he meets Hal, before he meets Hal up on the mountain, there's one bit in there that I just thought, and I this is one of the most important things I want to put out there. Telling Jesse, you know, how much he's the trauma of the whole event. And Jesse even says, Well, what was Hal doing anyway? Having an inexperienced climber up there it's like yeah jesse gets it (laughs) yeah however and this is the thing about perspectives how in his mind he doesn't see it that way even though jesse and probably a lot of people are like well yeah why would you take an inexperienced climber up there it's horrible that's happened but how in his mind is like we no, you didn't you didn't save her we did it your way it's like you can't be compromised with yeah I was sort of like, wow, he's very... The character is very one-sided, but that's fine. And some people are like that. Some people are very one-sided. They're just, you know, they're grief-stricken to the, the trauma of it, and it creates that tension between Hal and Gabe. Which I loved. Yeah. Why the hell did you come up here? To prove something? Look, I know how you feel about me, all right? You don't know anything! You did it your way... And she died. And it slowly, over the movie, there's still that tension there, but it's slowly like, I'm still pissed off with you, but I don't want you to die. Yeah. They As meet Hal it. said, you live with it. Yeah, you live with it. That's right. They meet up and they have that little tiff. I did what I saw was right. Well, you were wrong. It was your weight on the line that did it. There wasn't time for anything else, Hal. Oh, well, I guess we'll never know, will we? Look, Al, it was a bad time for everybody. What the hell do you know about bad times, man? And you didn't have to look into her eyes when she was falling. Now drop it. That little bit of uh, strong banter. And, yeah, they then go looking for uh, John Lithgow's character. Because they've radioed in, a fake radio in, yeah. that they're in trouble, but really they're not. I think we found a frequency. Somebody help. Please. We didn't expect the weather to come in this fast. I don't know where we are. On our way, you're gonna be all right. Please hurry. And they get there, and you got these two characters where their relationship's still not great, and now they're in a situation where they're gonna have to fight for their lives because things just went sour very quick. And this is where it says, you, stay. 
You fetch. You stay. You fetch. Ryan, get a rope. I want this dog on a leash too. John Lithgow says that. And then Travis's character yells in Sylvester Stallone, or Gabe, the character's ear, fetch. Yeah. Fetch. Do it. Really kind of aggressively and... Like I said, there was that constant testosterone yeah. all the way through it. Mm. Just bubbling away yeah. under the surface. And, and this is why I think it's quite good acting from the gentleman that plays Travis. That was Rex Lynn. Rex Lynn, thank you. Things aren't going to plan. So he's already irate. Yeah. And I think he does a great job. Stallone goes up there. He finds the case. And... He's in a t-shirt. He has to climb. They, they, those ex-military or the, the criminals don't don't trust him. Yeah. It's like, no, give us your give us your jacket, give us your all your climbing gear. Yeah. And you're gonna have to do this because they're like, well, we don't feel like if you die, you die. We don't really care. And and there was a little bit in there where Hal says he could freeze to death. So he still cares for him a bit, but he's still pissed off with him, and that's what I, that plays out through the film. We're waiting, gentlemen. I need my bolt gun and ice axe. No, don't give him anything. Take his coat for insurance. He can freeze to death! And once Sylvester Stallone finds the case, he realizes these guys are legit. You know, what, what Lithgow said earlier was, you know, help us find these cases because there's money in it, you know, and we're, we're all that kind of bad stuff, so. And that was a really good scene. <clears throat> and there was something I discovered afterwards about the way it was being filmed. So obviously you don't see it during the movie, but in, yeah. the, in the special features, they show you. And they built what was the equivalent of a builder's scaffold that went up the side of the cliff face. Oh, yeah. And it had a camera attached to it on a 45 degree angle. Right. So you can't see the scaffolding that's behind. You yeah. can only see through the camera's lens on that angle going up oh. the cliff face. And it was just brilliantly done. Yeah. Absolutely brilliantly done. Yeah. Uh, to direct that whole, the whole movie was quite a feat. Yeah. You know, it's, these days I'd probably say, look, they'd have a crane operator or a, a drone and they'd slowly pan up with yes. the climber yeah. and do it. But they had to think outside of the box yeah. in those days. And that rig they created just for that scene, mm. thank you, yeah. was fantastic. It was. It really was. So once that first box, I should say, once that first chest of money is found, Gabe, Sylvester Stallone, then opens the box and he's not he's not going to play along. No. He, he tips all the money out, throws it off the cliff. Well, he's warned by Hal that his time's up. I don't think we need two guides. Retire him when he comes down. They're gonna kill you! Don't come down! Nice. Don't come! Hold the rope! Hold the rope! Uh-huh. He's about to get done. Yeah, yeah, if you come back down, yeah. they're gonna kill you. And he, that's right, he yells out, one of the ex-military <laughs> guys... I don't think he's been to the snowies that often because he starts shooting at the mountain yeah. and launches some grenades and yeah. eh, it, it launches an avalanche. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, it's, it's like, okay. Um, I just thought that was a little bit amusing. So he's taken out. Actually, two, two people were taken out. So now they're down two in their crew. Yeah. And... Um, it's up to how to take him to the next case. Yes, because, the three. because John Lithgow thinks that Sylvester Stallone died in that, that in and it the was average. the most expensive funeral in history. Yes, because he thinks the money went and he went. Yep. Your friend just had the most expensive funeral in history. Now it's only you. And this is what I like. How's kind of purposely taking them the long way the whole time yes because they don't they're not they're not mountain people they don't they don't trek they don't know the area how is uh mountain rescue same with gabe they know the mountains like the back of their hands and they don't need to in the movie they don't have to show you that it's just common kind of sense that yeah this is their job they would know it 
and Stallone gets to a hut. Jesse's getting worried at this stage because the, the gentlemen haven't radioed in to say this is what's going on. That's right. And Jessie, So she contacts Hal. Yes. And Hal very cleverly gives away that the jig is up, mm. right? No one else knows. But Jesse knows. She goes, oh, hang on a minute. That message was all wrong. Mm. So that's yes. when she went out. That's right. She twigs. Yeah, You're right. it was very clever. Yeah, it was. So, and this is the other thing in the movie that's going on as well. With Jesse going out, realizes that Gabe is still alive, and they get to that uh, hut, get supplies, but there's another storyline going on underneath. This this is uh, a step for their relationship building that bridge back. Yeah. So one, it's getting Gabe confidence back to climbing and getting back on the horse and going around the mountains again. And it's also building bridges with Jesse again. And I thought that was really cool. And it, it's not shoving it in your face. No. It's believable and they're being put under life-threatening circumstances with this group of ex-military people that are gonna probably kill them at any stage. So he goes to the second case and <laughs> he gets there before the crew. Yeah. And again, Sylvester Stallone, well, I've got to stop saying, Gabe's character has got to the chest, he's got the money, and <laughs> Hal actually has a bit of a smile on his face when he realises, oh, he's still alive. Yeah. And he's got there. <laughs> Doesn't, let's go says something. I can't, I can't remember. remember either. I mean, John Lithgow had all of the really good lines in the he movie, did. which we'll get to a little bit later on. Gone on. Well, not amazingly, they do manage to track him down. Because he's, he's gotten there just before them. That's probably like a few minute intervals, maybe 10 minute interval. So they know he's not that far. Mm. Uh, one of the one of the men tracked down Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> they fall over and they slide down the mountain. As I said before about Sylvester knowing, or his character Gabe knowing the land like the back of his hand, he realises we're on a mountain, there's a ledge coming up. Yeah. So he gets his, his climbing axe out, puts it in the ground, luckily saves himself from going over the edge, but the guy that was he was wrestling with, yeah, he just keeps flying off. Yeah. And then, so another guy down in this crew, and, and you can start to see in the crew, things are starting to fall apart. Yeah. And there's one more case left. And there's a bit in the movie where Travis's character says, Hey, I feel like you're taking us the long way around. Yeah. There! On top of the peak! Hold it! Looks like a winding route to me. The fastest way is straight up the east face! Of course! There are only 12 guys in the world who could do it. Want to try it? And I like that. He said, well, we can take this way, but only, what? 12. 12 12 people people on Earth can do it. So do you fancy doing it? (laughs) So we'll just have to go this way. And Sylvester Stallone and Jesse are trying to cut through and, and get through. And their relationship is now back on track a bit. You know, they're back on track their relationships mending and they enter the bat cave oh yeah that the cave with the bats apparently they wanted to bring so this is a bit of trivia i read about they enter that cave and the director wanted to have real, real bats. bats and they went nah, nah. not gonna <laughs> <laughs> so i think they had a, a couple like for some of the still shots or whatever that's close up and the rest was just all oh, post-production. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm not surprised. No way. So <laughs> that that was interesting. Don't so, lose your train of thought. <laughs> so John Lithgow's character and, and team start setting up booby traps. Yeah. So they can't get to the third case. And this is the the gentleman. I can't remember every actor's name. The gentleman that was out of Cool Runnings, who I thought did an oh. awesome job. Yeah, so that's Kinect. Anytime you feel like saying something, don't. He does an awesome job, and 
he manages to stay back to make sure that you know Gabe's not going to make it to that third case, and he gives Gabe an absolute run for his money. Yeah, he really does. And where is the money? <sighs> Burned it. It amazes me in this day and age when a man will keep money for the personal safety himself. So when Kinnett's character is beating the crap out of him, I actually, it was kind of refreshing. It was like, yeah, this guy's a mountain guy and Stallone ends up taking him out. But it was only by chance. He just got, caught him off guard. Yeah. But if it was left up, Kinnett would have, his character would have taken him out quite easily. Yeah. Like he was way more skilled at, at fighting and... I actually thought, wow, actually he's, I don't know if he's going to make it. And he takes him out in a very, whoo, kind of pins him up against a, is it a stalactite? Stalactite. Stalactite. Yeah, from the top. From the top. I was like, oh my goodness. So the crew, this ex-military crew is now getting, there's hardly any of them left. And at this stage I'm thinking anything will go now. And they set up a bomb. bomb on the bridge. They set it right above where Sylvester Stallone and Jesse are. Yes. But they get warned by Hal to get out of there. Yes. Which leads to another really, really good scene. Oh, it's a great scene. And they had to run back. The bridge blows up. Get back! Get back! Go! Jesse, run! <laughs> Son of a bitch. But then they realise they're going to have to traverse. Yeah. With that rope. That looks about 100 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think a, it'll hold? Yeah. No. That's a great thing. Do you think this will hold? Probably not. Or yeah. no. Like, <laughs> like really reassuring when they're hanging over a, in a thousand foot bloody <laughs> cliff. Yeah. And the scene at the start kind of plays out again. It does. Jessie loses her grip, she falls, and Gabe just grabs her in time. And the difference, Jessie is an experienced climber. She reaches up. Yes. And she then reaches up and gets to safety, and she's okay. They manage to get across, because the rope does break, so that's why. (laughs) But they thankfully make it across. A traverse across okay and they're gonna locate that third case they they get to that third case and as he's putting the money in the bag his own personal bag <laughs> he sees a rabbit hole nearby yeah because <laughs> each case has a tracker yes he puts the tracker on the rabbit on the bunny yeah on the bunny <laughs> so how still showing the other ex-military guys where to go? You know, we're, we're close to the third case. And Travis feels like he doesn't need... Oh, well, pretty close now. Yeah. So I, I don't need how. That's right. I got this. Yeah. Get rid of him. <laughs> and that ex-military guy was having a little bit of beef with... With Kinnett as Kinnett. well. Yes. And that's where, during the movie, it's like things are starting to break down. Yeah. Because they're all starting, starting to get a little bit irate. The plan isn't going as well, and, and I just think it's great. I think the movie's kind of ahead of its time. And for a movie that goes for, what, an hour or 50 minutes, I yeah. think it's um, quite good. It doesn't go for three hours or anything. Like movies today, it, it kind of tightens it up a bit, and I think it's, it's paced really well. It was. And <laughs> he's, he says to the gentleman, you know, we don't need him anymore. Take him out. I've got this. I'll, I'll, the third case is nearby. And he has to do it quietly. <laughs> so do you want to take over this bit? No, you keep going. <laughs> Obviously, a struggle ensues. <laughs> so how realises, you know, things are, this is his last 
ass line. Mm. So he's going to tell the guy how much he he sucks. Yeah. And you're a lad, mouth punk slag. He's about to die. Maybe. But in a minute I'll be dead. You will always be an asshole. So go ahead and shoot. You'll always be an asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the guy kind of he got overconfident and thought, oh, I'm just, instead of just shooting him, he thought, no, I'll just have some fun with you. Yeah. So how has a knife on him? Has a knife on him. He actually manages to stab him and grabs him and throws him off the edge. <laughs> and we both laughed when we watched this because Travis is down at the bottom and that ex-military guy, as he's falling off the cliff, he's doing that, ah, yeah. to his death. And Travis goes, I said do it quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of comical and silly. <laughs> and... Travis gets to the third case, but he realises the, the marker is going around all over the place. Yeah, which, which makes no sense because no. a bad can't move. <laughs> no, that's it. And, and then in the test screenings, it's rumoured the bunny was supposed to get it. Yeah. And people didn't like that. That's right, so they had to change it. They had to change it. So let the bunny live. Let the bunny live. And it was pretty funny because he sprays bullets everywhere. And the money popped back up like, yeah. <laughs> like a meerkat, like. <laughs> and then we go to where no one's left. Half of his crew has died. Yeah. People that are really innocent have died, and there were two teenagers halfway through the movie that are base jumpers. Yeah. One of them cops it. I'm thinking. No one's left to chance. Like, th these people do not want anyone around. They don't want witnesses. They don't want... And I thought, far it. When I finished this movie, I was thinking, wow, there's a lot of people, strong characters that had a presence, they, they're gone. And I thought, wow, this is... I don't know. You didn't see that back then. You, you know, you always thought... The main characters safe, or these people are going to be safe, but no, that wasn't the case. Not at all. And so Frank, the other mountain rescue guy, cops it. And, and at this stage, it's only Travis and, and, and um, Eric. That's right. They're a team again. Partners in crime. Yep. <laughs> and this was the big showdown with Stallone. And John Lithgow. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, okay, how, how's this going to play out? And he goes, i got to admit, Walker, you're a real piece of work. And he goes, and you're a real piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. The, the movie is great. There's a lot of climbing in it. And Stallone's stunt double, who was, who, he was a rock climber. Yeah. Had to go to the gym, eat quite a bit. I think you had to eat five times a day. Da yeah, to get in, so people wouldn't be able to tell too much. Like he was just in just as much shape as Stallone, which is impressive, really impressive. I'm going to go back to the end here. There's a showdown between John Lithgow and Stallone, and even that fight scene isn't. It isn't long. No. You know, there's a couple of punches, a couple of, you know. There's that kind of 80s, 90s kind of one-liners or like a paragraph, like an, you know, Stallone says, Remember, shithead, keep your arms and legs in the vehicle at all times. Keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. and <laughs> You know, those kind of one-liners that would come from Stallone and, Arnold at the time, he saves the day. So I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with Cliffhanger 2, yes. that's being written. A movie that I can watch and I don't look at it and go, oh man, this movie's aged. It's still great. The, the movie's still really great. The whole cast is fantastic. I thought it was really well directed. What did you think? I agree. 
It was awesome. I've watched it more than five or six times. I would have watched it 20 times. Yeah, right. At least. Yeah. Probably more. It did financially quite well. Put Stallone back in, you know, did two flops. This kind of... Put him back on track. Yeah, it really did. Because after this, did he do Demolition Man? He did with, Demolition Man, yeah. With yep. Wesley Snipes. Yep. And, and Judge Dredd. Jo- Whew. Yeah, Judge Dredd. Yeah, Judge Dredd. <laughs> <laughs> I could still probably watch it, but for what the Judge Dredd character is. Yeah. But, you know, for what it is, I don't, I don't mind it. So, Stallone still... He's got Expendables 4 coming out. Still in amazing shape. Still in amazing shape. One of Stallone's movies that I really like. I, re- I think this is a great movie. They did, Rennie Harlan and Stallone did pair up again for Driven. Yeah. Which is the IndyCar uh, movie. I've, I've only ever seen that once. I'd have to go back and watch it again. I've only ever just seen it once. But this movie still holds up. It's a great movie. And again, I'll say it again. I think the whole cast and the way it's directed, it was, it's a top movie. And it it's a 90s action classic. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's, it holds up. It's a good movie. It really is. You know, I used to do a bit of rock climbing. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was indoors. <laughs> you can do indoor rock climbing. Yeah, well, that's what I did. That's the only one I did, indoor rock climbing. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> anyway, that. So we're getting towards the end. Do you have any favourite scenes or any favourite lines that really stood out in the movie? Oh yeah, there was a dad joke. You know, you know me and my dad jokes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Did you see the eyebrows go up. <laughs> yeah, did like it when he stole the money and to keep warm. He has a fire with the money. He says it costs a fortune to heat this place. I oh, know, hilarious. Ah, good stuff. <laughs> so for me, I mean, I thought the whole movie was brilliant, but specifically. The scenes with Eric Quaylen and Richard Travers, as the plan is starting to unravel and the, t- the tensions are beginning to tighten, the terse dialogue begins and it's magnetic. Both John Lithgow and Rex Lynn were outstanding with their constant chest beating yes. all the way through this movie. They just picked away at each other yeah. all the way through and I loved it. I yeah, really you're right. It. Character dynamic. And the relationships is fantastic. You're absolutely right. They just kind of niggled at each other. They just chipped away at each other. Um, you know, you don't have things in control, Traverse. Get off my back, Quaylen. I like haven't gotten on it yet. And even within the cr- their crew, they were at each other. Others were getting at each other's they nerves. Were. So group dynamic was really interesting. It was. Which brings me to my favourite lines. And I said earlier, Eric Quaylen got most of the really, really good lines. So these are some of the ones that I liked. Eric Quaylen, kill a few people, they call you a murderer. Kill a million people, you're a conqueror. conqueror. Yeah. Which is an original cro- quote from the French writer Jean Rostand. So the next one is Eric Quaylen again. And you've already re- referred to this scene. Do you know what real love is, Crystal? Sacrifice. Yeah, you know, shoots her. Exactly. Just so he can have the, be the helicopter pilot. I was just like, far out. No, that's what I mean at the end. I was like, this is kind of Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the next one, you've also mentioned this scene. Mm. Travers, we're missing three bags. Gabe, what's in them? Eric Quaylen, suits, socks, $100 million, the usual stuff. Yeah. It's Love great. that as well. Like I said, there was so much testosterone yeah. in this movie, Concord, <laughs> all You're the right, way bro. through it. You're and right, there were some was... really, really great yeah. lines all really? the way through it. Oh. If you haven't seen the movie, hire it. I'm sure it's probably really cheap. I, I it's on think, Netflix. It's on I Netflix. Think. I think. Right. So, well worth seeing. And, yeah. uh, we didn't even really get to the score. Which was great. Oh, yeah, the so, score. the score by Trevor Jones. And I remember when we were watching this, you went... Hey, Concord, he goes, have a listen here, because you really noticed it with the surround sound, and you're like, it's Predator. And I went, jeez, 
that really does sound like the Predator theme. It, it, it was, it was wasn't exactly, but no. so similar. Yeah, I was like, damn. So the Predator score, which was done by Alan Silvestri. Yeah. And as we said, so Cliffhanger was Trevor Jones, who also did Last of the Mohicans, which you pointed out. And he was, also did Labyrinth and Runaway Train. I think, I think we can leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Frog and I have enjoyed watching Cliffhanger and sharing our thoughts. I, I talked quite a bit. I'm sorry, Frog. I, <laughs> no, that was good. That was really good. I didn't mind playing the supporting role. <laughs> so hit that like button, subscribe. Have a look at our other podcasts. That would be really help the channel out. Check out some of our other podcasts where we talk certain topics. It would be really good. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, Frog. Thank you, Concord. 